Okay, I'm back again to show you a quick example using Aiden's workstation or the proposed workstation. So also because I'm running short on boxes my, on my own, I thought of, you know, I carry a briefcase around all the time. I thought, well, maybe we could go with like a work bag instead of a box. Now, I'm not sure that the, uh, with the Velcro, pulling it off and sticking it on is going to work with a bag. We might have to do a box, but I thought this was worth trying as we're kind of playing around with the system to see if it works. So I'm just going to put this here for now, but you'll notice I have the one, two, three here. I have Aiden's work bag on both sides. I have three tasks inside. I also made a done box. So, and this would go typically on the floor to the right. If for some reason, you know, you want to have a, a bin or something and he just pushes to the right, it's just important that the student knows where the done box is or what to finish. Then uh, another idea I was thinking about, this is something I've also used in the past, especially if you don't have a separate work area that you're going to be able to use and the student has to remain at his table. Um, I would say you can keep something like this. These are three file folders um, connected. You can um, decorate these. I wouldn't over decorate them. Sometimes it helps to have like if the student likes the beach or likes the mountains you might want to have a calming picture of that. Um, sometimes depending on the need maybe you'll have a color chart or you could do letters um, and uh, you could even what might be a really good idea is to actually take a picture of the student sitting down appropriately and then you could put the picture of the student on here so but you could set this up as the workstation and so what the student would do is pick up one the first task And number one is going to go on number one. Again, the student does the activity. This one for Aiden is um, the letter matching. These are his particular uh, letters in his name, the letters in his particular name. And I saw when I was in the classroom that they've also been working on L and M, so I added those letters. He would do the task, put it just like that, and it would go in the done box or the done side. Number two for Aiden is, I know um, from his, talking to his mom, he likes Marvel, especially Spider-Man. Again, this is a trial and error thing. Okay, we would put number two on the bag. Again, might need to do a box because that might not stick really well. But there we go. Gotta work with what we can. So um, again, this is, this is a five-piece Spider-Man puzzle to try with him. I think he'll be able to do it. Again, he does the puzzle, puts pieces back in the box, goes in here. And then number three I have for him. Again, I put it on the back. Is the pipe cleaner put in? And this is where there's some little pipe cleaners inside. And he would do this, he would do all those and then it would go in the done box. One final um, comment about this is obviously this is something the student needs to be taught how to do. Now I've already done some work with him as part of my evaluation process and I'm pretty sure um, that he's able to do these things on his own. I know he can do the pipe cleaners on his own and I know he can do um, the letter matching on his own. The Spider-Man puzzle is new. I had tried another five piece puzzle. He had a little difficulty with it, but it. It wasn't a really good graphic um, compared to Spider-Man. Um, and Spider-Man is a little more basic where it's um, folk, it has the maybe more familiar body parts like arms, legs, head. So I think that um, that should be pretty independent for him too. Um, okay, I think that's it for now. Thank you.